Welcome back to Cardanities.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, A Theory is Just a Theory, Under Determination in Scientific Theory, where we'll be looking at Are Theories Verifiable in the video today, and the problem of contrastive underdetermination. If you haven't watched the previous videos in the series, I would highly suggest you do that. They pose a few different problems, but also give kind of a little bit of a groundwork from where we're going to be going with this new problem. So, before we get started, let's talk about what we're going to mean by verifiable, because it seems to me there's some different definitions floating around out there. For this, we're going to be talking about something is verifiable if and only if it is able to be shown to be true via experiment. Or, in other words, using the terminology we've been using for this video series, a particular theory is perfectly determined by the body of evidence. So, there's no other theory that is also determined by the body of evidence, so each theory is underdetermined by the body of evidence. In fact, only one theory is determined by the body of evidence if a theory is verifiable. So, last time we were talking about holistic underdetermination. This was saying that we take a set of beliefs and show that responses to new evidence are going to be underdetermined. In this video, we're going to be talking about contrastive underdetermination, which takes a set of evidence and shows that one theory is not the only theory that can be supported by it that more than one theory can in some way be supported by it. To get a sense of this, let's look at a little bit of a simplification of the idea, but hopefully it'll give you an intuition to what the problem is here. So imagine you have, let's say, three data points on a graph, and you want to come up with a theory to predict where other data points are going to show up. You could come up with this theory, which would be supported by all the data points on the graph. However, you could also come up with this theory, or this one. Any number of different theories or functions or lines can be run through these different data points. And in fact, there's an infinite number. And while you might think that adding more data points and doing more research might limit some of these, no matter how many data points you add, there's still going to be an infinite number of possible lines or theories that can be drawn through them. Basically, for any data set, there are an infinite number of possible lines that describe it. So, for any body of evidence, there are an infinite number of theories that can describe it. Like I said, this is a bit of an oversimplification of the idea, but hopefully you get a little bit of the intuition. The idea is that the evidence we have can be used to support any number of theories so long as those theories account for all the evidence we have. What we're really going to be talking about here are empirically equivalent theories. These are theories which make all and only the same empirical claims and predictions, and no evidence will in fact ever allow us to choose one over another. These theories are going to be very problematic, because not only can we not show one of them to be true right now, but no matter how much more data we gather, we will never be able to show that one is true. So not only are they not verifiable right now, they will never be. Seems to be a bit of a problem. If you're wondering whether or not these things actually exist, here's an example. So, the following two theories are empirically equivalent. Newton's gravitation and mechanics in conjunction with the claim that the universe is at rest. And Newton's gravitation and mechanics in conjunction with the claim that the universe is moving at a constant velocity. Because we're inside the universe, we could never tell whether or not it's moving. And Newton admitted this problem with his theories himself. These theories will always make the same predictions, so there's no experiment that can show one to be true and the other to be false. Nothing, in fact, can show that one is a more likely explanation than the other. And in fact, Duhem claimed that no 
two supposedly competing theories can be shown to for one to be true and the other to be false. Because once again, along with the holistic problem, we're resting those on other theories. We're resting that experiment, that pinnacle, that important experiment that would decide between them on those other theories and beliefs. So we could decide that one is better than the other, or we could just throw out one of those beliefs that said the experiment was working. But that's getting back into some of the other videos we've looked at. Now, Larry Loudon's once again going to attempt to come to the rescue of science, and he's going to say that two theories will not always remain empirically equivalent. According to him, our epistemic and empirical tools are constantly changing. They may seem to make the same predictions now, or seem to have no way for us to create an experiment such that we could tell them apart, but might someday make different ones. Perhaps one day we will be able to observe the universe from the outside, and therefore be able to tell the difference of those two theories of Newton's. Now, a response to this might go as follows, and this is the uh, response that Kyle Stanford offers. So long as there is at least one other empirically equivalent theory, the theory is underdetermined. Well, perhaps we might find some way to tell apart the two theories that seemed empirically equivalent at the time. That doesn't mean that we will not be able to have at least some or at least one empirically equivalent theory to each and every one of our theories. It seems right now there's at least one empirically equivalent theory to all of our theories. We're going to talk about some examples coming up soon. And so there doesn't seem to be any reason for us to believe that one day we will have a perfect set of theories that don't have any empirical equivalents, even if specific ones might at some point be proven not to be there. So, Ehrman is going to offer some great examples of theories that we have right now in science that have empirical equivalents. At least two genuine cosmological theories have serious, non-skeptical, and non-parasitic empirical equivalents. The first essentially replaces the gravitational field in Newtonian mechanics with curvature in space-time itself, while the second recognizes that Einstein's general theory of relativity permits cosmological models exhibiting different global topological features which cannot be distinguished by any evidence inside the light cones of even an idealized observer that lives forever. Basically, Ehrman has gone and found specific empirically equivalent theories to our actual cosmological theories that, as he notes, even by an idealized observer that lives forever, there would be no way to tell the difference. This seems to be quite a problem, at least for some of our theories that have these empirical equivalents. But perhaps you say that, well, maybe not all theories do. Well, I'm not going to be constrained by non-skeptical versions because I'm a skeptic. That's where I live. So we're going to look at some of the versions that Kukla offers. According to Kukla, for all theories T, we can generate other empirical equivalent theories, such as T prime. The observable consequences of T are true, but T is false, or T double prime. When observed, the world behaves according to T, but when not observed, it behaves in some other way. All three of these theories are empirically equivalent, and no experiment we can do will be able to show that one is better than another. These exist for any and all theories, and every new piece of data that confirms T, every piece of evidence that confirms T confirms them all. So none can be shown to be true. None can be, by our original definition, verified. Therefore, any new data confirms empirically equivalent yet contradictory theories. No one theory can be shown to be true or even more likely to be true. Only that it is one of a set of theories that is confirmed by the evidence. 
we cannot show that any one of those theories is more likely because every piece of evidence that we have shows that they all could be the case. And the only way we can decide between them is through irrational means, as we talked about in the last video. That was our theories verifiable contrastive underdetermination. In our final video, we're going to kind of wrap up a lot of the things that we've talked about, ask the question, are our theories correct, and talk a little bit about transient underdetermination. Watch this video and more here at Carnadies.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.